live on Rupaini Channel I. I'm Sharon Maskrinias. I'm Uvin Hetiarachi and here are today's headlines. Quarantine curfew to Western Province from midnight today. Strict restrictions on travelling outside the province. A decline in COVID-19 patients in Gampaha, several areas in Kaluthar have been released from isolation status. An app on COVID-19 information. Minister Kehlia requests all media institutions to extend the fullest support in combating the outbreak this time, similar to the support extended to defeat the first wave of COVID-19. 20th Amendment to the Constitution enforced. Nine MPs of Samagi Janabalavega have been removed from the party MP group. Another terrorist attack in France. Now for those and other stories in detail, starting off with local news. Quarantine curfew will be imposed on the Western Province starting from midnight today till 5 a.m. On Monday, the public in curfew enforced areas will be able to purchase essential commodities and medicine until 10 p.m. today. Quarantine curfew has been imposed in 68 police stations in Colombo, Kalutara, Gampa and Kurunagala districts at present. The other isolated villages apart from Navajanapade in Kalutara district were released from isolation status today. Even though the quarantine curfew for the Western province will be lifted at 5 a.m. on Monday. The curfew being enforced in the police divisions at present will continue until further notice. Steps have been taken to open the food ration stalls and pharmacy for only two days per week in curfew imposed areas in respective districts. However, the National Medicines Regulatory Authority permitted to distribute medicines in curfew imposed areas while adhering to health protective guidelines. The permits of the pharmacies can be used as curfew points for the distribution of medicine. Meanwhile, Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavindra Silva has requested the public to refrain from travel to other areas during the weekend, which is a long holiday. Nuwaralia District Secretariat has requested the public from traveling to Nuwaralia during the weekend. All tourist destinations in Nuwaralia has been closed. Meanwhile, a total of 1,235 individuals have been taken into custody for violating the quarantine curfew. A decision has been to limit the railway services in the western province during the curfew imposed period. Accordingly, railway services deployed from Rambukana to Colombo Fort and from Beliata Ke Gaul, Aludgama Kalutara to Maradana will not be operated from tomorrow until November 1st. Also, trains from Avisavela to Colombo Fort and Chilau to Colombo Fort will not be operated within those two days, according to the railway department. Steps have been taken to deploy trains designated for students facing the GC Advanced Level Examination on time. Sri Lankan Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva says that a decline in COVID-19 patient has been reported from Gampa District. A total of 4,142 COVID-19 recoveries have been recorded from the country thus far. A total of 414 COVID-19 patients has been detected from the country today. 352 of them have been identified as close contacts of COVID-19 patients detected from Paliagoda Fisheries Market. The others were detected from quarantine centres. The process of self-quarantine, the primary contact of recently reported COVID-19 patients has been initiated. Public health inspectors and health officers will monitor whether these individuals are adhering to quarantine process between 6 a.m. and 11 a.m. The police will the process during the period from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. The authorized officers from the tri forces will observe the process after 4 p.m. The National Operations Center for Prevention of COVID-19 outbreak has said if the individuals detected to self-quarantine have violated the quarantine regulations, medical health officers of the designated areas will decide whether those individuals will be directed to self-quarantine at the residence or direct them to a quarantine center. Health authorities have reached a decision not to permit public gatherings in Western Province. The Association of Specialist Doctors has indicated that the patients should not develop unnecessary fear to visit hospitals to receive treatments for their medical conditions. Meanwhile, two individuals from Bhagatang Valava area have been identified as COVID-19 patients. It has been revealed that patients in had attended a puja in a Kovil and Bhagavan Thalava. Accordingly, the priest of the Kovil and staff have been redirected to self while the investigations are underway to identify those who participated in the puja. A person from 
Pala Gala has been positive for COVID-19. Investigations are underway to detect his close contacts. A woman from Khudaba area has been tested positive for COVID-19, according to Hangwala Medical Health Office. The patient has been admitted to COVID-19 treatment center. Meanwhile, three COVID-19 patients were detected from Makulugola Badulla district and the Avalua and Ulhitya Kote. Their close contacts have been directed to self-quarantine at present. A COVID-19 patient was detected from Bandarvel recently. The reports have indicated the patient's wife and daughter have also been tested positive for COVID-19 today. The COVID-19 patient has been identified as a businessman of a vegetable wholesale market in Bandarvela and steps have been taken to temporarily close down the market. 11 stalls in Tambutegama Special Economic Centre have been closed down after identifying a businessman who visited the market from Migoda Economic Centre as a COVID-19 patient. Accordingly, owners of the stalls and their close contacts have been directed to self-quarantine. Close contacts of the COVID-19 patients who are residents in Kurunagala and reported from Palikola uh, Fisheries Markets were directed to PCR tests today. Consumer coordinators of the Ceylon Electricity Board have decided to resume their duties amid the present situation of the country. Accordingly, Ceylon Electricity Board has requested the public to adhere to cell health guidelines during the visits of the consumer coordinators to residences and other places amid the prevailing situation. Speaking in media briefing held today, Chief Epidemiologist Dr. Sudat Samaravira briefed on the present situation related to the COVID-19 outbreak in the country. Up to now, 9,205 COVID-19 cases has been identified in our country. Out of them, 5,111 under treatment in hospitals, as well as 5,000. 131 cases out of all these cases are related to Paliagoda and Minuangoda clusters and yesterday we have identified 335 new COVID-19 cases, majority are from the Colombo Municipal Council area and we observe that some of these cases are coming from the highly congested flat residences and these multi-storied buildings and that we observe that people in these places even during the curfew time that they are not adhered to the public health measures that they are mixing together and going to each house different houses they are visiting their houses and also not wearing masks and not adhering to other hygienic measures this is very alarming situation this may cause that the disease more and more is spreading in these areas so because of that we kindly from all people to adhere to the public health measures, uh, not to visit other houses, to stay at your own home and also if you are going out for some reason, some essential reason, maintain the one meter distance, wear a face mask properly and also keep your hands well clean, washing your hands with soap and water frequently. And also that uh, there is, will be a curfew if post from 12 midnight today for three days and just because of this that it is being imposed in the western province, we request from the people in the western province to stay at home during this period don't try to go out of the province now the people may try to go out of the province because that there is a curfew but it is not advisable and it will not do the purpose that we are imposing curfew we are imposing curfew to limit the people's movements to interact to limit the interactions with among people so this is very very essential to control COVID-19 and if the people are going out of the province that means that uh, there will be social interactions and also if there are accidentally some COVID patients undetected, they will be taking COVID-19 out of the Western province to other provinces. This is a very damning and dangerous situation. So because of that, we request the cooperation from the, all the public, especially from the people in the Western province, and to adhere to the health measures, stay at home, don't go out, and be cooperative. And also because of the there is a high incidence of cases in the western province. Certain measures have been taken to limit certain activities. This include open markets and the economic centers, beauty salons, spas, and also all the type of meetings and public gatherings, and including religious activities, are not allowed in the western province until further notice. And to bring you the COVID-19 update from around the world, coronavirus cases in India have 
crossed the 8 million mark with the world's second worst hit country now bracing for a possible second wave ahead of winter. With more than 49,881 new reported infections today, India now has 8.04 million COVID-19 cases and 1,200 my apologies, 120,527 deaths. The world's second most populous nation has recorded the second highest tally of infections after the United States, which has recorded 8.9 million cases. The scale of the coronavirus pandemic in India increased again on Thursday as the country reached the grim milestone of 8 million cases. India is the world's second most populous nation and also has the second highest tally of infections after the United States, which has recorded 8.8 .8 million. Cases in India have dipped sharply from September's peak, but experts warned the current festival season, which traditionally means celebrations all around the country, could bring about another spike. Prasanna Kumar is a pulmonologist at a hospital in Bangalore treating COVID-19 patients. We should not relax. Definitely we are, we are also prone for the second wave. What we have learned in the previous uh, SARS and MERS, the second wave is uh, supposed to be the dangerous one. The death toll has been low relative to infections, with 517 new deaths recorded in the last 24 hours. According to health ministry figures, the total number of people who've died from the disease is now over 120,000. Meanwhile, the newly appointed Director General of Health Services, Dr. Asela Gunavardhana, assumed duties at the Office of the Health Services Director today. Minister Pavitra Vanyarachi was also present at this occasion. Obtaining his degree in medical sciences from Peradhan Medical Faculty, Dr. Asela Gunavardhana received his Master's in Medical Administration from the Colombo Postgraduate Medical Institute. In addition, he has also received a Master's degree in Business Administration from Open University Sri Lanka and has obtained a Diploma and a Master's degree on Business Studies, my apologies, Buddhist Studies from University. City of Kelania. Prior to his appointment as the new Director General of Health Services, Dr. Asela Gunavardhana assumed the position of Director of Kalubovila Teaching Hospital. The Western Provincial Health Services Office has introduced a new application for all stakeholders involved in the COVID-19 prevention process and the medical field to access necessary information conveniently. The application was introduced when the Task Force on the Prevention of COVID-19 Outbreak, which convenes on a daily basis, convened under the patronage of President Gotabe Rajapaksa today. A team led by Western Provincial Health Services Director Dhammika Jailath has introduced this new application. Essential information including COVID-19 patients, close contacts, quarantining process, PCR test services, observations and nearest areas of COVID-19 patients can be obtained from the new application. The president pointed out that the new application should be designed in a manner to notify information relevant to the new developments. COVID-19 patients have been identified from 28 health officers' divisions from 350 across the country. The members of the task force mentioned the maximum efforts that have been taken to curb the further spread of the virus to other areas. The members pointed out that approximately 41,000 primary and secondary contacts of the patients have been directed to self-quarantine as an attempt to curb the further spread. The president emphasized the necessity to conduct random PCR tests covering all parts of the country. President Gotabe Rajapaksa said that the constant checking up should be continued in the supply chain. He added that if random checks had been conducted in the fisheries market, they could have been able to identify the COVID-19 patients at the initial stage. Accordingly, he said that random checks should be carried out in places where supply chain exists, including the Mulla Economic Centre and the Colombo and places linked with fisheries market. He added that considering the vegetable distribution, wholesale places linked to Colombo Fort should also be checked accordingly. Support of all stakeholders is essential to curb the spread of the virus provincially through the commodities distribution network. The president said that the individuals from all social statuses has the responsibility or social responsibility to conduct themselves according to health guidelines. The president said that the law should be sternly enforced during the curfew imposed period in the western province. Police stations will not issue curfew passes unless for an emergency situation. President Gotabe Rajapaksa emphasized to the relevant authorities Authorities to leave no room for social gathering in the Western Province. 
Prime Minister Mahinda Rajbaksha has appointed two advisers on religious affairs. Their relevant letters of appointment were present at the temple trees today. The former Chief Justice K. Shri Pavan has been appointed as the senior advisor to the Prime Minister on Hindu religious affairs. Meanwhile, Dr. J. M. Swaminathan has been appointed as the advisor to Prime Minister on Hindu religious affairs. The 20th Amendment to the Constitution will be implemented from today. Speaker Mahinde Appa Bhaivartana signed the blueprint of the 20th Amendment to the Constitution today, the Parliament Communication Unit stated. The draft bill has been signed off at the office of the Speaker in the presence of the Secretary General and Deputy Secretary General of Parliament. The Speaker signed the blueprint of the Constitutional Amendment at around 11.30 a.m. this morning, the Secretary General of the Parliament, Dhammika Dasanayaka, said. The Deputy Secretary General and the Chief of Staff, Neil were also present during the event. Thereby, the 20th Amendment to the Constitution will be implemented in full from, to, from today. On October 22nd, the Parliament approved the second reading of the bill with 156 in favour and 65 against. Subsequent to the committee stage, the third reading was passed with a majority of two-thirds after having taken a division. The new constitutional amendment will now be considered as the law of the country with immediate effect. The Chief of Staff and Deputy Secretary General of Parliament Neil Idavilla stated. Retiring on the 2nd of November after completing 36 years of service, the Sri Lanka Air Force Commander Air Marshal Sumangala Dias called on President Gotabe Rajapaksa at the Presidential Secretariat today. Assuming duties in his post on the 20th 9th May 2019, Sri Lanka Air Force Commander Air Marshal Sumangala Dias is the 17th Air Force Commander in Sri Lanka. The Air Force Commander has been presented with many awards, including Vishishtata Seva Bibushana Medal for the services rendered to end the three decade war on terrorism in the country. The President extended his good wishes for the services rendered. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka Air Force Commander Air Marshal Sumangala Dias called on Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa at Temple Trees. Commending his services rendered towards the country, the Prime Minister extended his gratitude to the Sri Lanka Air Force Commander for the support directed to provide health services facilities, including quarantine operations amid COVID 19 pandemic situation in the country. Retiring Sri Lankan Air Force Commander Air Marshal Sumangala Dias met the Chief of Defence Staff and Sri Lanka Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva yesterday. The meeting was held at the Sri Lanka Army Headquarters. Meanwhile, Minister Kehlia Rambukwella has requested all media institutions to extend the fullest support similar to the joint effort taken by all media to defeat the first wave of COVID-19 outbreak. Combat the outbreak is present as well. He said that all state and private media institutions have a massive responsibility in this regard at this moment. Minister Kehliya Rawukala made these remarks during a meeting held at the Ministry of Mass Media today with the Electronic Broadcasters Association presented by owners and the heads of electronic media institutions in the country. The minister emphasized the importance of the message extended by the media on health protection of the people and the country. If a joint program can be initiated similar to the previous occasion, it would become a national duty. The association informed the minister over the issues pertaining to national media institutions due to the certain satellite and television side channels. The association pointed out a massive amount of fund has been sent to nations due to certain illegal channels. Additionally, Secretary to the Ministry of Mass Media, Ruan Satakumara, said that the Gen and the Gen Director General of the Government Information Department, Nalaka Kaluveva, were present at this occasion. The newly constructed Maragama bus station was vested with the public today. The new bus station has been constructed near the Navin grounds. The operations of the bus station is commenced at the presence of Chairman of the Road Passenger Transport Authority of the Western Province, Prasanna Sanjeeva. The new bus station was designed under the Maharagama Development Plan in accordance to the instructions of the former Defence and Urban Development Ministry Secretary and present President Gotabe Rajapaksa. The construction of the new bus station was carried out under the guidance of the Megapolis and Western Development Ministry during the previous government period. A total of 89 million rupees was spent for this development project. The new bus station set up to operate 17 regular bus services at nine express ways bus services. A program to distribute face masks for the bus passengers was also initiated in parallel to the ceremony. That's it for tonight.
English news. Thank you for joining us. Good night.